Saturday Social, brought to you by EA Sports FC with PlayStation 5. There's a lot of clubs that are sort of going to be under the radar. A lot yeah. of um, underdogs performing very well. The likes of Aston Villa, Aston Villa. Actually flying, ball, not picking it up. But a lot of players as well yeah. that are performing particularly well. The whiteboard is out and it gave us an idea, didn't it? Yeah, of course. We're going to be building out today our underrated Premier League 11. So both mm. Dan and Sam have got their 11s that they feel are underrated in front of them. You can select for whatever reason, as long as you can argue that point successfully mm. against your opponent. Whoever has the best argument puts their player on the board until we see your combined mm. underrated 11 for the Premier League this season. Should we start in goal? Yeah, let's start. So let's reveal the keepers that you've got and see which one makes it. Ooh. So Dan's gone Burnt Leno. Oh. Who have you gone with? Oh, Ariola. Ooh. Okay, so Dan, let's start with you. Why Burnt Leno? Well, first of all, I like that selection, by the way. I'm proud of you there. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> wow. What is going on? <laughs> so patronising. No, 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 I'm proud. I'm proud of my boy. Um, for me, when I was doing what makes an underrated player, I wanted to not only have what their capabilities are, but how their stats almost match up to players that we do rate. Um, this guy here has got the same clean sheets as David Ryan Addison this season, and he's actually faced four penalties this season as well, which means um, that stat alone is, is good enough. Um, he definitely faces a lot more shots than those teams because of the way Marco Silva likes to set up his teams. He's naturally going to be facing more shots, so to have the same level of clean sheets, mm. I think deserves a lot of credit. And um, what he lacks in like dominating the box aerially, I think he makes up for with his incredible shot stopping. And um, that's why I think Leno deserves a lot of credit. I actually think that's a really good shout as well. Right. Another stat as well, 144 saves in the Premier League last season. That was only David Roy with more last season. Obviously, he's continued it this season with the clean sheets, as you said, and the performances. So I feel like he has been under... His XG pre prevented pin, pin, last season. Yeah, XG crazy. Like crazy. Addison well. levels, he is like a so. great keeper, and I'm not going to deny yeah. anything you've just said. But is he underrated? That he's one of those keepers that you can say that obviously he made the move from Arsenal to Fulham and everyone was saying that's a bit of a, a strange move to, to, to the extent of he is still a quality keeper and mm. he's proven that at Fulham. I think if you were to see him make another move to another top, top side, you'll be like, OK, that makes sense because he's still in that category. So I don't think he's necessarily underrated. I think with my team, I've gone underrated but deserve more flowers as well. And I think Alphonse Ariola is one of those keepers. I think... For West, what West Ham are doing this season, you can you can say that they haven't been that good in, to a certain extent in terms of um, winning on a consistent basis. But the core of their team has been decent when you look at their defence, when you look at their keeper as well. And I think he's been very consistent. And if we're looking at a keeper that could make a, a step up to, let's say, one of the top six sides or another top side in Europe, I think he's still capable of making that move. Some people questioned him coming to West Ham and saying, is he making a step down? He's already proven that he's still a top-class keeper. And for me, that's why he's my keeper. Tough. Good arguments mm. made there. Good arguments made by both. Uh, we always ask both our guesses, anyone... Happy to concede early in terms of thinking the other one's got a good shout. And do you genuinely think he's underrated? Do you think if you were to ask 20 um, fans right now, is, is Bernd Leno a great keeper, one of the best keepers in the league, they would say no? Yeah, I think the majority would be almost like indifferent. I don't think they'd realise just how good of a keeper he is. And I think that's why, because when you get deemed surplus to requirements at a club like Arsenal, and then you're getting sent to Fulham that who knows what season they could have, his performances have been almost a contribution to the direction that Fulham are going in with Marco Silva. Like, they're, they're, they're playing good football. They're actually coming out of Mitrovic's shadow now. They're, they're starting to find their groove without him. And uh, as a team, I think they deserve credit. And he's a big part of that. I don't, I don't think he's one of their big players. Like, Bert Leno is one of Fulham's yeah, yeah, best players. 100%. I, I don't mind, but I just don't think he's underrated. I think out of these oh. two keepers, he's, he's... Well, what do you guys think? I think he made some really good statistical yeah. points. Do you know what? We always base this based on who brings the best arguments. I was going to Let's go Burnt Leno. Stick him on the board. Good start. Debut on Dan. Gets his start. Let's move on to right back. Good place. This is a rogue shout from you, I think. Why, why do you think that? Because he cost a lot what is that? of money. What is that? Pedro uh, Porro. Pedro Porro. Oh, oh my. I, I think he just deserves. You just like said I, to Dan about like, like, like not said, being actually underrated. Like I said, I think it's, my team is a mixture of players that are underrated and deserve more flowers. And I think when you look at the Spurs side, you're hearing a lot about Van der Ven, Romero, and Udogi. And I think in, in the times where, you know, some of those players haven't been present, especially from the game that they had against Chelsea, where it was nine men, but he was still 
a quality, quality yeah. player in that game. And he's since awesome. then, since then, he's, he's had been... a really good season. But I think Pedro Porro is getting two, the the flowers he deserves. I don't, I don't like, think so. Look, I think if you look at the Spurs team, I don't think you'll you'll put him as one of Spurs' top five players. And yes, they've been performing uh, really well. But I think he's been one of their most consistent performers. He's on set pieces as well. He, he's already, you know, bought into the the culture and the love in the club. So I think he deserves the more flowers. Of the way that the Ange system is trying to play and with the, the and, and a lot of people but... questioned whether he would be able to be a good right back sure. because of the way he, he was in previous years and he's proven that he can but be. You're saying you don't think he's underrated because of I the I just think tag. he's one of the best right backs in the league and everybody would say that. Yeah. I don't think anybody, if you if you spoke to, like you said a minute ago, the average guy yeah. on the street, how good's Poro? I think everybody would go, really good player. Yeah, okay, but deserves more flowers. Deserves yeah. more flowers. Tommy Yasu, why so, Tommy Yasu? So for me, the what Joe said there, hits the nail on the head for me because if you were to talk about who are the best right backs in the league this season, Pedro Porro would actually, his name would come up before Tommy Asu's. But Tommy Asu has been one of our best players this season. Who's a better player, do you think? Right, this season? Yeah. My boy Tommy. But he's been he's been injured for for quite a few. No, games. So, so this season since he's been back, yeah, he's keeping Ben White out of the team. Mm. If we're talking statistically, I, I I looked up this stat and I was like, right, this stat maybe favors me. I'm not saying that him and Trent are in the team to do the same thing, but if we're just oh talking gosh. about Ooh, if we're just wow. oh, oh, wow. where's he going? Danger! If we're, we're wow! Going. If we're just talking about right back for right back, right back, uh, Trent has made two errors leading to goals. Tommy Asu has made none. So and would you have Tommy Asu over Trent? No. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> okay. But I'm just making that argument. And also, he's won more aerial duels than Ruben Diaz, who we would say is a centre-back enforcer, along with Virgil van Dijk. So he's won... So it's just, he's great defensively. Yeah, statistically, but... he's bringing the thing. And when he wasn't in the team against Luton, we went to Kenilworth Road and we were put under pressure. We conceded three goals. Tommy Asu is a quality player. And no one... I don't think... Even if you ask Arsenal fans, they wouldn't say he's not... He's underrated. They rate him. He's no, just not... He's just not. Cons- that about Poro? Yeah, yeah, but remember what I said you know, giving them their flowers. And Tommy Asu, he's one of those players that he's only been suffering from injuries. He's, if you if you ask any Arsenal fan, they'll say he's quality, but he can't stay fit. No, when, he That's fir- the only when thing. we first signed him, when we first signed him, he'd been brought into a position. Then Ben White got deployed, uh, uh, like, as a fullback, and Ben White was clearly keeping him out of the team. We're going to have to get a decision. I'm biased to this because I'm a Spurs fan, so I'll let Joe... Referee I think Poor deserves more saying. flowers. I think if we're talking underrated here, again, I think it's Tommy. How is it underrated? He's not underrated. He's get just him not been consistent. That is just... Wait, which side does it go on? Wow. Right, on your side. Right, right. side. <laughs> uh, let's go to centre-backs. Let's do both of these at the same time. Right. I see you, Perry. Do both of your centre-backs at the same time. So you've gone... And let's pick up your other one as well. Pick so up the two and just show them to the camera. Jamal Sells and Ted Ming. OK. Who have you got, Sam? Uh, Anderson, Anderson and, Gabriel. and Gabriel. You're underrating Gab- Gabriel. I, I have been one of those people, and I'll hold my hands up, that I didn't really rate him. That sounds that like extent. a you problem. No, 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 but I think it's a, it's a thing that I've seen in football, that oh, Saliba is Rolls-Royce and he's a quality centre-back and he can play alongside anyone. But I think Gabriel, for me anyway, when I've been watching, I've said, you know what, he's up to that level like he's he's almost he's almost proven to everyone why you know at the at the start of the season everyone was saying oh does Arteta want to do something different when he came back into the squad he's been immovable and he's also showed a consistency and a lack of rashness that he wasn't showing last year so yeah I think underrated that's I think what I'm getting at remember Top three centre back partnership show, showing show when the giving them their flowers. This isn't giving them flowers. Yeah, no, but it's, under- it's under- under- flower shot. I'm, I'm talking about <laughs> it's players. Not a flower shot. No, but <laughs> Gabriel, Gabriel, <laughs> really to, to a certain extent, he has been underrated because everyone talks about Saliba in a completely Comparing different. Sal- yeah, completely but I, I, I would, I would say that Gabriel, uh, Gabriel and Saliba are the reason that. Uh, Tommy is underrated. They they say that the the where why we are where we are is because of those two in the middle. Um, for me, Ted and Mengi, yeah. his first season at this level. I think he's only played as a sub in Europe for Man United once. Yeah. He's come yeah. in. He took a bit of time to get used to things, but now he is a rock at the back for Luton. A man of the match performance against Liverpool in the one one. A narrow defeat away at Old Trafford. Uh, an amazing performance. He generally kept our uh, wingers quiet against Arsenal and a lot of our goals came through the middle. I think he's been incredible and I actually think that this guy is going to go to the very, very top in football. Ooh, okay. Okay. Yeah, quality, I think right. that's a good shout, actually. What, look, should we do, for fairness, have one each then from, from your two? You've yeah, Wackham Anderson has to be in there. I can't so who, who you, you're going Anderson. A- Anderson, I think he's one of the best centre-backs. And which five league? clean sheets in six games this season. I think and Jamal was a good shout. No, it, PSG, it Man great... City, Man United, Arsenal and Chelsea. It is a great shout. That was a quality team, team performance. Performances, but I think Wacky Anderson, when you look at yeah. one of the best players in, in his position, so not underrated. Talk, 
No, but not talked about like he is. And that's the biggest I thing. I think we talk about him. So if we can do one each, or do yeah, you I think, Anderson. I think Anderson has to go up. Anderson. Anderson. I think oh, Anderson's wait. a good shout. So you're going to have to pick one of yours. Bro, you've got to be accommodating. You can't have every player, bro. Where are you going with that? I just feel so strongly about these, but... Listen, Jamal LaSalle's top, top player. Amazing performances with Newcastle's injuries. But for me, Ted and Mengi. Go on, then. A couple, couple of the shouts. So worth pointing out, I'd, I'd chuck Lewis Dunk in there. I'd probably chuck Ezri Conzer in there as well. I think, yeah, I, think, yeah. I think Mario yeah. at Forest. Yeah, he's good um, Let's move on to left back, then. All right. Oh, we've got the same one. Well, if you both hey. the same oh, one. Oh, my boy. Straight on, sure. yeah. well, what done. a great season he's had very quickly, Sam. Yeah, yeah, quality. I think he's... I, I was struggling. I needed an Everton um, defender yeah. in there. I yeah. wanted to put Brantthwaite in. I should have put him in over Gabriel, to be honest. I'm but surprised I, there was no Jared yeah, Brantthwaite. I think yeah. he's been quality this season, but I think Mikalenko as well has been one of those players that you can say, yeah, he's... Okay. okay. Should spot. we go... So we're playing 4-3-3, are we? Should we go yeah. to the DM that you've got? Oh, I've, I've, got, I've, got, a, yeah, I've well, got a bit of a fluid... I've got Thank a bit you. of a fluid midfield three. Oh, let's, let's pitch these two against each other, then. Okay, well, who have you got, Sam? So you check. Suchek. Suchek. Yeah, and yeah, Gallagher. Yeah. Gallagher. Gallagher. He's, so, so he's for quality, but DM. Look at, look at how happy he is. But listen, I'm not going to DM. <laughs> I'm going for like a, like a dynamic midfield three. Okay. I think Chelsea spent, what was it, 200 million on midfielders? And they're getting outshunned by a guy that was at one point surplus to requirements. Uh, he was an attacking midfielder for Palace, but since he's come in now, he's been industrial. And I think him not being on the pitch was a big part of why United were able to cut through I agree. Um, Captain Chelsea, Chelsea so in um, eight games this season. He's been a big player for Chelsea this season. Do you think he's underrated, though? Um, yeah, to, to a certain extent, so though. Giving to, him this one. No, I don't, no, no, you know what it is? I to, to, to a certain him. extent. I, everyone and I, I, I agree, because I think when you, when you look at what he was doing last season, obviously everyone was saying Chelsea should have performed better. But I think he almost got the, the more of the brunt of it because of how what you expected from him for what he did at Palace. I sure, think yeah. this season he's kicked on so much, especially with the noise that you saw with the in the transfer rumours and everything that happened with yeah. our midfielders. He's been a constant. And you can say that we wouldn't have been as bad against United if he was in the squad. So, I yeah, no, I, I hear That's that. a matter, actually. Most chances created, tackles, interceptions and possession one in the Premier League for Chelsea this season. Also most possession one in the final third of any Premier League player this season. He's having a, so, a very good season. Suchak. But yeah, I put, I put Suchet because I don't think... I just don't think he gets flowers in general, to be honest. I think he, he's one of those um, midfielders that you, you look at and you say, oh, he scores those occasional goals when West Ham need him and this, this, that. But losing Declan Rice... Bringing in a whole different midfield and then having Suchek, who's been a constant, he's been a consistent performer. When I speak to West Ham fans, they only sing high praises of him because of how consistent he is. He's not the most glamorous uh, centre midfielder, but he's constant well, and consistent. A massive goal and he this scored season. big goals for them as well. So I think he seven, deser seven goals this season. He deserves seven a lot. He deserves a lot more flowers. More and, and he's, Premier League. He's, he's a decent player, man. Okay, need a decision. Either of you um, I, I go against think, your boy? I think Suchek, as a, as a DM, I, I would put him against As a Chelsea else. fan, we'll, we'll allow you to say... Here. <laughs> Heart or head, mate? Ah, oh, just, just put him there. Just put him there. <laughs> <laughs> OK, next <laughs> midfielder. Next midfielder. Should we do the other the two together? The other yeah, two got Because it, yeah. Yeah, Dan's saying it's kind of a fluid th three, so let's see... Yeah. And there's an agreement the, here, isn't um, there? There is an agreement. Oh, yeah, lovely. Got. So you've got John McGinn and Bruno, OK. Yeah. Bruno. You've got John McGinn. Phil Foden. Yeah. What is Phil happening? Foden's yeah. underrated. underrated. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, by the way, by the way, I don't want people to get this misunderstood. I, I'm Phil Foden's biggest fan. I think he's unbelievable. But I feel like everyone then. thinks he's unbelievable. He's generational. Yeah. So to, who a cert, to a certain extent. had him extent. in the Ballon d'Or list. No, that's that's it. How it. many flowers do you want these players to get? What, you have it with tulips, <laughs> roses, magnolias? What do you, you, know, want? you know what Magnolia. Yeah. What wow. do you know what it is? Yeah, What's that? Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me, yeah. But the conversations I've been having recently, yeah, about Phil Foden, people have just been disrespecting him. Like, genuinely, when they're talking about City and what they're doing this season, and yes, they've he's not been... He's not underrated, is he? But he's, he's a, one of those the players that, that deserves... disrespect uh, a Trent Alexander-Arnold. Like, there are always going to be people... But you can say the same for Bruno, though. Yeah, no, Bruno, Bruno, is, Bruno is... No, but Bruno is he's extremely uh, disrespected. He's, but that's what I'm saying. We're, go, we're both going the same more, He's got more goals and assists than Shabozalai this season, you know? But we're, going, we're, we're both going the same, same angle. Both disrespected to mm. a certain extent. They still rated players, but deserve more. That's all I'm saying. I'm but not if saying we were, he's if not... If we were talking about who are the best in, in those positions, I think Foden would come up. And I think if you mentioned Fernandes... Bruno would 100%. No, I think, I think most yeah, people I would go, no, nah, well, Bruno We need, we need a decision on this. I, I'm but, leaning towards... Putting Suchek on. Yeah, I was going to say... Yeah, we could, <laughs> we could do that. I was going to lie. We could do that. We're both fans of Bruno, <laughs> both fans of Foden. I have to take your point. Um, <laughs> right, we're going midfield. Pascal Gross, I want to shout out as well, by the yeah, way. I Pascal think he's Gross. crazy underrated. I cannot believe none of underrated. you have Pascal uh, uh, Gross. Yeah, fair. you could chuck yeah. loads of bright players. I think players Douglas Louise. Um, well, should we go to the right wing? Yeah, right wing. Kulisevsky. 
Hmm. Dejan Kulusevski. Now, obviously, in recent Top weeks... Top player. Yeah, in recent weeks, Ange Ball is not quite going how Smithy and, and the Spurs fans wanted it to go. But I think at the start of the season and from beyond when Ange came in, Kulusevski has been incredibly consistent. He's not as high-octane as, uh, like, a Doku or a Sterling where he, like, gets the ball and attacks the fullback and hits the byline. He's actually very good at recycling possession. Yeah. But I think he's... Work rate for the team. Yeah, work and rate. And there's a lot incredible. of un stats that a lot of people don't see. I mean, he's played in Tottenham's last 40 games, so he's, al he's always there. But also, second most chances created from open play, only behind Salah. Most touches in opposition box, most distance covered, fourth most sprints of all players in the Premier League. So there's a lot of metrics. And he scores big goals as big well. Big goals, that header. Assists. So there's a lot of metrics. But a people lot of love him. Is a little game. bit like yeah, Foden and Fernandez. People would he's say he's underrated. he is one of the best wingers in the league. Would you yeah. say that, though? Like, if, if I say, name me the top five wingers in the league... If I was to name me the top, f like, five right wingers in the Prem, Kulusevski would definitely be in So, Diaby at well, Villa's get getting in there. Top wingers in the league. He wasn't in the top ten for our yeah, guests, then. I don't think he is. But that's on the guests. I, no, but I don't he think... He, 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 he definitely yeah. is. He definitely is. Even when you... Even well, the that would mean he's underrated, though, isn't he? Even the stats... To be fair, you would, you have him at, would you have him at United? Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I Silly question. That one. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I've gone. I've, my my three forwards are interchangeable. You Go know, on. I've I've gone in, good one. In Do you know what? That's a good shout as well. I, I think he's one of those players that not has gone underrated because he scored so many goals. But when you look at how they started the season and everyone questioning what Brentford are going to be able to achieve without mm -hmm. Ivan Tony, he's filled that gap seamlessly. And yep. I think he's one of those players that. If he was going to make a move to a, a, an, another top club, you wouldn't question it because you've seen what he's been able to do. And yeah. I yeah. think he deserves more flowers and he's a little bit... I think he's only behind in goals in this calendar year, Saka and, ha and Haaland. Seven goals and three assists in the Premier League this season. Yeah. Best scoring season is nine goals, which was last season. You both want one. Either of you? At Embremo. Yeah, I'm I think you better. I'm happy to yeah. concede Embremo. I think they're both two good shouts, though. Two good shouts. I'm happy to concede Embremo. Um, so far as well, can I just say, we're going at a rate of one player per club. We've done it accidentally. Wow. But it's, yeah. like, is he going to carry on? Let's have a look. Carry on? I think so, you know. I well, think so. Striker. I've got my strikers. Got Solanke. Striker. Dom Solanke. Odson Edward. So you've got Solanke versus Edward. I think I think I I do like Edward. I was close to putting him in, but I think Dominic Solanke has just been incredible for Bournemouth this season. Though? I think he is. I think when you look at when you're talking about top strikers this season, you don't necessarily hear him in that conversation. And obviously, the way Bournemouth started, you wouldn't think that he's been performing, but he's been quite consistent this year. You know, he's yeah, he goes goals, seven Premier League goals, seven, seven, seven Premier League goals, goals, seven and, goals. He, and he's I think. This season, he's proven that he can be a Premier League striker. Sure. There's been years in the past where he's saying, can he really uh, stamp that, that position? And he, he is this year. I think he's the third highest English goal scorer in the Premier League. Yeah, eight goals and seven uh, in the Premier League. As for Edward, he's got um, seven goals... Yeah, well, yeah, six of the club's 14 Premier League goals. Do we stick Solanke I think so. because we've got a Palace player? Joe, I, I think Solanke is better as well. I definitely think Solanke's better. I think Odson Edward is more underrated. He's only two goals behind Huang Hee Chan. Lovely. OK, but and Solanke's we could have... Go. I tell you what, shout here. By the way, from when we were doing this, by the way, and we were me and Joel from s put our suggestions in, um, I put your man here, Huangi Channel. I think he's crazily underrated the goals that yeah. he scored. So I think that's a fantastic shout because he was one of the first ones that I. Um, but is he, is he underrated winger? though? Uh, I, uh, uh, yeah, uh, okay. I don't think anyone. No, but apart from Haaland and Ollie Watkins, the next striker that you say is the striker of this season is Huang Hee Chan. Yeah. You say it now, but you still don't really hear him in like but you just see his name. You just see his name. You don't yeah. re you don't really talk about it like, oh, he's such a great striker. You just see him scoring goals. But if you've watched Wolves this season, he's been so important. I think he's great. Well he's playing. He really good goals. Yeah, exactly. Nine yeah. goals, eight Premier League goals already. There's he only there's scored only... like three goals last season. There's only a few strikers above him. Yeah, I, th I think I think he's good. Obviously, I've got has been awesome. Recently, yeah, though. I've got a yeah. winger in terms of. This I think. Season, yeah, I think. Uh, I think Bournemouth have. Uh, uh, I think Bournemouth have picked up something like. How many? Yeah, uh, third most informed team across the last. Yeah, 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 games. yeah. They've, uh, they've uh, in, the, in their last six games they've been they incredible. Were they were winless in their first nine, of course, so that left them dead and buried. And I think. Does that affect the semester? Well, I think uh, I think his comeback from that, and also when you're an Iriola team, you're expected to be technically very good. Mm. A lot of wingers can get outcast by it, but I think. <laughs> He's put him on. Good. He's put I think him on. We have oh, to have winger in the team. Do you know what's great? <laughs> what's great about that? That's good though. That's right. I'm thinking there is a different player from every club. But will that be the case with the managers? Go on. Oh, what are you saying for manager? I've gone Gary and Lil. Of course you have. And you've gone... Deserby. Deserby. No. 
I think Deserbi we've... is an amazing manager. He's not underrated. He's the next he's man. The everyone's talking about Man City yeah, manager, that, Real Madrid. I hear that. Gary O'Neill is a great manager. Is he I'll underrated it. though? Is he? I, I think I, he's fairly rated. I think there's quite a few managers that are fairly rated. But if we're talking about managers that deserve more flowers, you know, I think Gary O'Neill. Stop saying I think, that. I think, I think, I think <laughs> you got a brand deal with flowers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's flowing on flowers here. by Sam Obaseki. <laughs> um, I honestly think uh, Roberto De Zerbi, like, we're like, wow, Roberto De Zerbi's doing a great job. Almost like we're talking about him like Graham Potter at, at Brighton. Like, oh, he's doing a great job. I don't think people are realising that Brighton have an elite manager. He yeah. can manage any But he can, one can become elite. And, and what he's proven already with Wolves, even with all of the decisions that I have gone against him, this. I can't I think, concede I think he's Roberto De Zerbi to Gary He's not underrated, so unfortunately... What's going on I, here? I think What's what we'll say is, this isn't a, a, a debate about managers and, and careers and ceilings. Sure. This is about who's underrated. I, think, I don't think... The only thing I'll is. say is, we haven't got a Brighton player up there. So we might as well know, have a Brighton mad, gaffer. We haven't got, like, Grosses out there. I can't Solly believe Pascal Gross, Solly Lewis Dunn. I rate these Lewis players, Dunn. though. I rate Some would say the gaffer is the most important and part And can I just team. say, I think the player that we should have included the most, well, Anthony Gordon. Anthony Gordon, yeah. <laughs> but he's not is underrated. He underrated? We're I'm talking about him guys. going That's what I'm saying. To right, well, anyway, are we having a, that's the confirmation. Fine. Let us know. We'll ask the viewers at home. Let us know what you think of that team. That is the underrated 11 from Dan and Sam. Let us know what you think at home.